This is the first session of C++ that is introduction to OOPS concept. In this session we are going to learn what are the features of OOPS methodology, SDLC process and creating the classes in C++. We all know that what is uh, a C++ is the object oriented programming language, right? So we are going to study what is the object oriented methodology, what are the other methodology available for writing a program how a program is written or how a software is developed that is software development life cycle and we are going to also study in the first session that how to create a simple basic program in C++ how to create the classes in C++ okay so first we'll understand for creating any software okay there are there are many factors which affects the software development of the software system there can be some complexities when you are creating the software system it can be internal complexity or the external the internal complexity means that the software itself you might have a software which is having a lot of functionalities to be developed in that right so the composition of a system itself is called as the internal com complexity and external complexity means sometime uh, the users themselves are not aware of the fact that what they want okay they only have a vague idea about you know idea of how their system works they don't know the internal technicalities of that how the let's say for example if the order is processed then that order data goes from where to where okay so and uh, and have the difficulty in expressing their requirements they are not very strong at explaining to the developer that what exactly they want in the software so these are called as the external factors which also uh, affects the software system okay so if you have these features it is very difficult to manage the software development process then uh, suppose for example a system gets more sophisticated as a result of evolving a technology and the needs of the users okay so for that purpose you need a proper uh, proper methodology to be followed for creating the software development process what can be the reasons for complexity involved in the development of the software that is difficulty in managing the software development processes lack of standards for developing the software what do you mean by lack of standards there are there has to be a dedicated softwares there has to be the softwares which can uh, you know which can need or which can satisfy your need such type of softwares should be there so you get the flexibility for developing the software and difficulty in predicting the software behavior okay actually it is called as the complexity of the software is an essential property it is not an accidental one okay you need to understand the criticality of each and every feature which you want to implement so you need to d predict each and every feature in detail how the data is flowing how the uh, let's say invoice is printed or how the message box is appearing on the screen how this color is changing right how the size of the control is getting increased on the screen so there are so many things which you need to consider in detail if you don't consider it it will be the the software development will be a complex process so a proper methodology has to be followed how can you simplify this complexity by breaking down a problem into the simple chunks you can say for example your washing machine is not working and you're calling the engineer okay for mechanical engineer suppose you're calling for repairing your washing machine so what he'll do he will just looking at the the washing machine and just looking at the problem he'll not be able to understand what is the exact problem for solving that problem it opens your washing machine it it puts all the parts se separately and then he tries to understand that what is the exact problem and then he corrects that problem assembles your washing machine again and then your washing machine start 
working so in the real life also how do we solve the problems we divide the problem into a small small parts so that each small parts become easy to solve and we come up with the main problem solution so we have the um, you know people many of the time people ask that why software cannot be constructed the way the aircraft or the high rises building is constructed constructed by putting together several small constituents to build the whole software can be developed by first breaking the application into the component objects which interacts with each other okay like a washing machine in the washing machine there are so many small small hardware devices they might be communicating with each other and if you understand that in detail then only you can you know uh, create a software and using those small small parts you can build the software so so for doing this what is required is the object oriented approach for building the software okay and the basis of the object orientation are contained in the object model the object model furnishes the conceptual framework on which the object oriented methods are based and we'll be discussing the basic concepts specified in the object model here in this slide so what is object oriented methodology in the object oriented methodology there are many uh, your program is divided in terms of classes and objects okay whenever you talk about the object oriented programming language we always have two words which again and again comes up that is the class and object what is a class and what is the object class means suppose for example i'm creating a software for the student like say school management okay for managing the students of the school so for representing the detail of one student what all you need is the you might need to store the name of the student you might need to store the roll number of the student you might need to store the address phone number of the student so all these information you need to club under one name that is called as a student right these are the properties of the student so what we do is we create a class called a student okay we create a class that is called as student and there are many students in the school right let's say there are 1000 students in the into the school now is is everybody's roll number same no every student has a unique roll number so from that class objects are created a class student is created which represents just the structure saying that okay if a student is there it should have roll number it should have name it should have this or it should have that that's it that is what you you just define the virtual structure of your main object okay that is called as the class after the class when you actually want to store the value we create the object from the class what is the definition of the object you can read the very first point it says that it is an instance of the class what is the object it is an instance of the class that exhibits that exhibits some well defined behavior okay 